And you know, these events are not as much fun without the customary predictions. Experts and non-experts trying to build their credibility and prove their knowledge by accurately predicting medal halls and the winners of some of the biggest events at the Olympic Games. Well, we are no different and today is Prediction Day on Lubbock American Sports Magazine, Sports Illustrated, were first out the blocks by predicting the medalists for every single event across all sports in Paris. As, uh, interestingly enough, they predicted 16 medals for the English-speaking Caribbean, 15 in track and field, and one in cycling. Another significant takeaway from their predictions was the 18 gold medals predicted for the USA track and field. Now, only once in the history of the Olympic Games has a country won more than 18 gold medals in athletics. And guess who it was? The USA, who won a record 22 gold medals in track and field at the 1904 Games in St. Louis. And here's the full Sports Illustrated list of Caribbean athletes. So they have... Uh, Keyshane Thompson, Syl Shellyann Fraser-Price, Sharika Jackson, Nakisha Price, Wayne Pinnock, Akira Nugent, four men's 4x1 four and the women's 4x1, that's for Jamaica. They have 14, all silver on the track, um, a couple on the, in the pit for Wayne Pinnock and uh, Nakisha Price, you know, who is the 400 meter world lead at the moment. That's an interesting one there. And for bronze, they have Oblique Seville, Daniel Williams, Rochelle Clayton, Lamar Distin, Shanika Ricketts, and Kerry McLeod. St. Lucia, they have one bronze medal. That's for Julian Alfred in the 100 meters. And Trinidad and Tobago, one silver, Nicholas Paul. Hmm, another interesting one there. So nine silvers for the Caribbean uh, and seven bronze medals, no golds. Now, Ricardo, first of all, your thoughts on this prediction from Sports Illustrated? Yeah, you know, quite interesting. The first thing that jumped out at me, Gerardo, is the fact that no gold medals have been predicted by Sports Illustrated for the English-speaking Caribbean. So that jumped out right away. It Initially, when I looked at their predictions, it appeared to me that they went mostly and definitely as far as track and field is concerned with the top list for 2024. Mm -hmm. So the athletes who have the best performances in 2024 uh, were given preference um, in terms of what they expect to do in Paris. The exceptions though, mm -hmm. they also um, gave pretty high ratings to athletes who have done well at past global championships. So like a Shelley and Fraser Price predicted for silver in the women's 100 meters. Um, Marilyn de Paulino of the Dominican Republic predicted for gold in the women's 400 meters ahead of the Jamaican world leader, yeah. Nikisha Price. Uh, Daniel Williams predicted for a 100 meter hurdles bronze medal because of her championship history, two world championship gold medals and a world championship bronze medal. Um, so we saw a lot of that very very interesting on the part of uh, Sports Illustrated one of the things just looking at a lot of the predictions from across the world that I think is becoming evident because I think this as far as track and field is concerned especially is going to be one of uh, the most competitive Olympic Games um, so many of the events are difficult to predict because of the depth mm -hmm. And what I think will happen, depending on where the predictor is from, is where you'll ultimately <laughs> see the majority of the top performers yes. going. So let's take, for example, Noah Laz predicted to win the 100 meters. If a Jamaican publication is doing that, more than likely the winner Thompson. is going to be Kishane Thompson or Oblique, or Oblique Seville. Mm -hmm. If it's coming from Africa, for example, then Akane Simbini or Let's See, get, let's see where Tebogo mm -hmm. will be in the medals. You're not seeing that on the part of Sports Illustrated and you are unlikely to see it if someone from the Caribbean um, is predicting the men's 100 meters. So I think you're going to see a lot of that as far as the predictions are concerned. Now, I was a little bit concerned though about uh, Keyshane Thompson not being able 
to get a gold medal or they're not predicting that Keishan Thompson will have a gold medal. The fastest man in the world right now, 9.78 seconds. Uh, of course, uh, Omani Adel, 9.79 earlier this season, 77 seconds, that's Keishan Thompson. Uh, but like you said, yes, this is an American publication and, and I'm sure many of our viewers are not surprised that there are no goals predicted by Sports Illustrated for the Caribbean. I am happy though that Julian Alfred has gotten in there um, that is another part of the discussion that we will go. I'm sure you would like to pick up on that point, Ricardo. Yeah, I just want to look at the predictions that I have made. So whereas Sports Illustrated predicted 16 medals for the English-speaking Caribbean, I had 19, 18 of them coming in track and field. And I go with Sports Illustrated as well with Nicholas Paul being able to get on the medal podium in the men's sprint. So here it is, two gold medals for the English-speaking Caribbean, 10 silver medals and seven bronze medals specifically now for jamaica that's where the two gold medals will come kishane thompson and nikisha price and then predicted to get silver medals oblique seville sharika jackson over 200 meters akira nugent in the sprint hurdles the women's four by one and the men's four by one along with the women's four by four and then the bronze medals tia clayton Mm. In the women's 100 meters, I'm sure we'll be chatting about that later on. Mm -hmm. Hansa Parchment in the 110 hurdles, Rochelle Clayton in the 400 hurdles, Wayne Pinnock in the long jump for men. Interestingly, Sports Illustrated predicted two medals for Jamaica in the long jump, Wayne Pinnock and Kerry McLeod, but none in the triple jump where Jaden Hibbert and I've predicted a bronze medal for Jaden Hibbert in the triple jump. Um, so, yeah, those are my predictions for Paris 2024 for Jamaica. Now, let's look at St. Lucia. Two medals, whereas Sports Illustrated has won. One. Two yeah. medals for Julian Alfred. Silver in the 100, bronze in the 200. One for the Bahamas. It's silver in the men's 400 meters for Stephen Gardner. Like Sports Illustrated, I've gone with the world leader here, Matthew Hudson-Smith of Great Britain. Dominica, one medal. It's silver. Tia Lafond in the triple jump for women. Um, Grenada, one medal. It's bronze for Lyndon Vick in the decathlon and trinidad and tobago one medal silver nicholas paul that expected to come in cycling and specifically the men's sprint mm, well i have a, a question for you ricardo it seems that your well sports illustrated has gone with historic uh basis to put their predictions together it seems that you're going mostly on current form it's a combination of things it is a combination of things current form is one thing you look at the head-to-heads as well you also look at what the athletes are dealing with in terms of injuries for the 2024 season mm -hmm. um, that could play a significant part in how a lot of the races turn out at the olympic games in track and field the truth is if athletes aren't a hundred percent fit if they haven't been able to put in the type of work um, in the build-up that is ideal um, then you just cannot be certain what is likely to happen to them. So um, we'll get to the sprints later and I can deal with some of those in more detail, but I think we're starting with the jumps. All right. So you have uh, Jaden Hibbert there, the triple jump bronze medalist, as the triple jump bronze medalist, that's your prediction. What about Shanika Ricketts? Great question. What about Shanika Ricketts? Again, she has great championship pedigree. Um, she has world championship silver medals, hasn't gotten the Olympic medal yet. Um, there is no Yudemar Rojas in the field this time around. And so it's a great opportunity for someone to snatch uh, the gold medal. But from my standpoint, Shanika just has not shown enough this season. And if I were predicting her to medal, I would love for her to medal. Mm -hmm. But if I were to make a prediction for Shanika Ricketts to medal, it would only be because I am Jamaican and because <laughs> I want the very best for her. And my predictions don't usually um, go like that. I do have Hernandez from Cuba winning because I think throughout the course of, of the year, she's been the most consistent competitor. Um, she's been able to get the better of her main rivals more often than not. Um, Tia Lafon for silver, great confidence coming off the World Indoor gold medal. Um, and she looked very good in London in the build-up. She looked like an athlete who is building towards peaking at the Olympic Games and threatening that 15-meter mark 
Denmark, if not getting over it. And then I have for the bronze medal, Romanchuk. Um, she's only had one competition, and I think it was in London in the build-up, but she is such a quality competitor. She is injury-free again, and to go over 14.80 meters just in your opener for the season, it says to me that come the Olympic Games, she will be very dangerous. And so I give her the nod for bronze. The women's triple jump, like so many of the other events at the Olympic Games in Paris, will be very tight. And in many cases, if you're talking about a track event, will go down to the wire as far as the finish line is concerned. Yes. And in the field, will go down to the closing rounds because I think you're going to see leads changing hands quite a bit. When you have Yilimar Rojas in the women's triple jump, for example, you know where the gold medal is going. I don't think we're going to get that this time around. Yeah, well, I know that the Dominicans who are watching this are very, very excited that you mentioned uh, Taylor Fawn. They so might be disappointed it. that it's not gold that I predicted <laughs> for her after I mean, she won the she world indoors. Indoor chance, yeah. but, you know, these, these things are, are really something that we need to keep looking at. And, we never know because it's unpredictable. The Olympic Games, everybody shows out their best and anything can happen. That's why I, I stay far from predicting hurdles events, but we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, I need to ask you though about Wayne Pinnock, Kerry McLeod. You have those two meddling. In, well, no, well, I only, you I only, only have, have Wayne Pinnock, but Sports, uh, Sports Illustrated, Illustrated has had, both yeah. McLeod and Pinnock. Um, why did you go against McLeod being in the medals. <laughs> so here's the thing, and, and let me see how best I can say this. I think Jamaica has three men in the long jump, all capable of meddling. Do okay. I think all three will medal? No. But I think based on what Sports Illustrated, I mean, has predicted, I think that's very much possible. Like we saw at the World Championships last year, Wayne Pinnock second, Tajay Gale third, Kerry McLeod fourth. Kerry McLeod finished third at the World Indoor Championships earlier this year. Kerry McLeod won the national title ahead of Pinnock and ahead of um, Tajay Gale. So when you look at the way they have performed over the last year, you just never know. It really does go day by day and who can turn up um, in, in the best possible shape on that particular day. Wayne Pinnock for me though, um, I'm a massive fan of Wayne Pinnock because of his championship pedigree. Um, you think about his history, he's won medals at the world junior level. Um, he's, won the N he's won NCAA titles. He had the world championship silver medal last year. And coming into the national championships, he was struggling with injury. Remember, he got injured at the NCAA championships. Now, if he's been able to put in the work since the nationals, then for me, he's my favorite to be in that top three. The defending champion, Tentonglu from Greece, is always difficult to beat as he's proven. He's Olympic champion, he's world champion, he's world indoor champion, he's European champion, and he seems to win everything on, on the final jump. Um, Ferlani from Italy, the youngster, has been brilliant as well so I have him in the medals um, but again it's another event that you predict three but you know deep down that it could be any one of seven or eight who could be in the final three because there's a lot of depth in the event. Lamar is still in the high jump, still a teenager. No, no longer a teenager. Well, no longer, <laughs> <laughs> um, just finished her collegiate um, career outstanding as a collegiate competitor she is number three in the world with 2.00 meters mm -hmm. sports illustrated has gone with her for a bronze medal which is fair on on their part for me though and by the way just to be clear i think lamar distin has the quality to win a medal in paris having said that it's all about being able to deliver on that day for me, has the consistency been there enough this year for me to say, yes, sure, she will medal? Maybe not. But deep down, I know she has that quality. She showed it a couple of years ago at the Commonwealth Games. Um, incidentally, she um, had a great NCAA season, struggled after the NCAA season, didn't look great at the Nationals, but turned up at the Commonwealth Games and beat the world champion can, can, from can, Australia. Can't can you... Can you I guess, put that towards her workload at the NCAA level? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I just think that she's 
um, you know, had some technical issues that she's been trying to work out. And if she gets those down, she is a medal candidate. She's a two meter jumper. If you go to the Olympics and you can replicate that two meters, then you are in with a shot. Um, but has she jumped two meters consistently enough for me to say sure? No. Um, one Diamond League meet in the build up to the Olympics finished fourth. So again, that suggests that she does have the quality. So it's not a bad prediction on the part of Sports Illustrated. I put her though in the category of um, possible, but I'm not sure. All right, let's go over now to the hurdles. Uh, let's start with the 400 meter hurdles. For the women's, of course, we have the top two, the no doubt Femke Bowl. Uh, taking silver, Sydney McLaughlin Levroni will take the gold. Um, we can see Whoa. that. Yeah, I, I'll, You're sure? I'll make that. I'll okay. make that prediction. She'll probably break the world record again. We don't know. Who knows? Uh, Rochelle Clayton, though, a very big possibility for that bronze medal. Yeah, she's twice World Championship bronze medalist 2019, and then last year, Shamir Litter did not make the US team. And by the way, Shamir Litter pipped her at the London Diamond League for second spot behind Femke Ball. Um, she has to be the favorite for the bronze medal, given how well she has gone this year. She is the third fastest in the world this year. And when you combine that with her championship pedigree, I think most um, predictions that you see will have Rochelle Clayton for the bronze medal in the women's 400 hurdles. Yeah, and of course, those top two finishes are, are barring any hurdles being crashed into. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Sydney McLaughlin Leveroni is the favorite. Um, Femke Ball, I most expect her to be second. Um, for me, I'm just hoping for a phenomenal race and a race that we will never forget. Uh, much like we had in Tokyo in the men's 400 hurdles, mm -hmm. because I can't forget that one. Definitely can't. Um, I'm glad you picked up on that point, though, because Sports Illustrated, and I have very much difficulty with this, Ricardo, Sports mm -hmm. Illustrated having Rai Benjamin taking the gold. He's my favorite, too. I have Rai Benjamin taking gold. Um, and it's interesting because at the start of the season, um, I had Addison De Santos winning the gold He's medal. My he he had a fabulous start to the season, but he hasn't looked that good in the weeks building up to the Olympic Games. When they met in Monaco, Rai Benjamin won, Varham finished second, and De Santos was a distant third. I have to wonder if somewhere along the season he got hurt um, and is working his way back. But Rai Benjamin has looked in sublime form all season, and it's very, very difficult to deny that. I think the world record will be under threat here as well. Mm. Um, it was a shock to me when Varham ran 45.94 in Tokyo. It wouldn't be a shock if at least two men went under 46 seconds in the Olympic final in Paris. Yeah, but we know how that goes, though. How does it go? Unpredictable. Anyways, <laughs> let's, let's talk a little bit about the, 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 the sprint hurdles now. Yeah. Um, the women's 100 meter hurdles. Megan Tapa is out. She won't be in Paris, so their goal is a bronze medal spot wide open. I mean, all medal a spots. A bronze medal wide spot open. wide open. <laughs> uh, listen, this is probably the most open event at the Olympic Games. And yeah, because they do have the world record holder in there as well, Camacho Queen. Who there is everybody who you can there? think of world record holder, Olympic mm -hmm. champion, world champion. Um, former world champion, everything is there. The world leader is there. Um, but I don't see you have the, the world indoor champion in your predictions. No, so for me, right, because the women's 100 hurdles is so difficult to predict, I just went to the world list, looked at the top three, <laughs> and put them one, two, three. Listen, it's the simplest way to do these events, to do this event. It doesn't matter what you do in this one, mm -hmm. you're probably going to be wrong. So mm. it makes no sense stressing the brain cells trying to come up with a possible top three because, yeah, you're probably going to be wrong. Well, when Toby Abbasan uh, was here for Races Grand Prix in Jamaica, uh, she did say that there was a lot of niggles that she had to work on, not injuries, but a lot of technical things that she needed to work on in order to get herself ready for the Olympic Games. Have you seen her since then? And everybody will tell you that they have, in that event especially, that they have technical things to work on. It's the nature of the event. It's the nature of the event. Quick comment, quick comment on the 110 meter hurdles for the men. Yeah, so Grant Holloway, um, I have to win. Daniel Roberts for second. And Hansa Parchment for a bronze medal, not based mm. on how he's gone this season, but based on his championship pedigree. Okay. It is rare 
when Hansa Parchment is fit that he does not find a way to get into the top three. And it doesn't matter what his season has looked like. Um, whether he barely makes the Jamaica team or not, when he gets to a global championship and if he is fit, he's dangerous. And so I have him in there for a top three finish. Remember last time around, uh, Holloway went in as the massive favorite yeah. and all the way up to this stage in the final was still the massive favorite. And then Hansa Parchment came tearing forward mm. to snatch the gold medal away. It's the only title the American does not have. He has world indoor titles. He has world outdoor titles. But he's missing this one, the Olympic title. I suspect he should get it this time around, but it's the herders, you can never be too sure. That's right, because one clip and it can just go eh, completely different to what you expect. So just remember though that you can watch uh, the Olympic Games on the Sportsmax app, no matter where you are in the world. And uh, yeah, you want to make sure that you download it today. You have all the coverage on Sportsmax and the Sportsmax app. And uh, yeah, watch all the channels, you'll see what you can watch wherever they are in the caribbean wherever they are in the caribbean yeah you yeah. said the world my apologies in the caribbean <laughs> <laughs> anyway stay with us more weather prediction talk as we delve into the sprints and relays in track and field after this oh the, the world